if you want. <laughs> wow. I got the hiccups right before filming this. Hello, I'm Finch. Thank you so much for watching. And today I'm going to be going over my process for writing song lyrics. I'll be using my original song, A Go, as my primary example just because you can find it on my channel, by the way. But if I can find a more applicable example, I'll use it. This video isn't about the origins of all my songs, so I'll try not to go too into detail about that, but it is still very relevant to how I write my songs, so uh, no promises. Finally, I will be compartmentalizing it into a list because I like lists, but this does not mean that my process is in any way rigidly set in this order or anything like that. 1. The concept. So the first thing I always do is I think of a concept that I think about a lot and find interesting. Basically, if you feel the need to turn to someone you know and go, Hey, do you ever think about- Write a song about that. Unless it's a weird shower thought like this one. A lot of songs stay on one main concept, some of them actually have two or three, but I always start with one. The original concept with the go, for example, is how much your thinking changes when you get older and how different life will end up being from your expectations. When I was like six, I genuinely thought, man, 2020. And wouldn't you know it? Number two, the summary. So once I have my concept for either the title line, the chorus line, or just the title itself, I'll try to think of a word or phrase that summarizes the concept, whether that's obvious or not. For example, the chorus of Sugar Toffee summarizes the warmth and safety I felt in middle school when I was like staying up until 3 a.m. on my computer. Uh, as a sanctuary from school because that's what the song's about. Or a go being the name of its song because first of all I like weird cryptic names, second of all I do say it several times in the song, and third of all it is about the weird incorrect things that I thought about long ago. Finally the last example, a title that summarizes my concept but isn't in the lyrics at all is Mountain Path. Mountain Path is also about the journey of growing up which is full of ups and downs and beauty therefore I named it Mountain Path. Three, the feels. So now that we have a concept and a title line or chorus or whatever that summarizes the main thing your song is about, let's talk about shapes. Basically, I want people to get feelings from my songs, and to do that I have to put my feelings into the songs, and feelings don't really make sense, so neither do my lyrics most of the time. When I'm writing my lyrics, I don't think about what's factually true, I just think about what feels true. I'm gonna go back to the chorus of Sugar Toffee on this one. Obviously, I wasn't actually in danger when the sun came up, but I didn't feel safe anymore because I, you know, had to go to school and face my peers. And that's why I wrote All is Safe Until the Light of Day, which is one of the less abstract ones. One of the more abstract uses is the fire metaphors in that song. It represented the glow that I felt when I was allowed to be alone and creative in myself. It was a soft warmth, so I mentioned fire once in the first verse and then again in the chorus and I use the words brightly and softly to make it sound appropriately safe and inviting. Honestly, I don't do most of this consciously. When it comes to my feelings, I have a making sense filter and then when I write, I just turn it off. Then I just brainstorm those lines until it looks like I have enough to put it together into an actual song. Then to write the bridge, I usually introduce a new idea like character development or a line that seems particularly like it might cause some pondering on the listener's part. Number four, rhyming. I don't have a ton to say about this because honestly, rhyming becomes pretty natural to me. But, um, if I am having trouble with it, I usually try to think of any word that rhymes with the last one and try to make a context from that. So basically, if I can't get the rhyme from the context, I will try to work backwards. I also have plenty of songs where I just don't worry about rhyming or I make it really loose and that works fine as well. Just go with your feels. I have no idea how common knowledge this is, but in writing lyrics we use things called rhyming schemes. Rhyming schemes are basically the pattern of what rhymes with what in your song. Because not every line in one verse, for example, has to to rhyme. In fact, they usually don't because that would get pretty boring. So instead there are schemes, like having every other line rhyme with each other and then the ones in between those ones can rhyme with each other or you can just make it open-ended. There are a bunch of different patterns you can use and the lines rhyming with each other are usually labeled with letters. For example, if you have every other line rhyme and then a the ones between those rhyme with each other, then your scheme would be A, B, A, B, etc. Five. Structure. Once I have a bunch of ideas, I can start putting them together into a full actual song. Now, the standard structure of a song is this. Verse 1, chorus, verse 2, which is usually half the length of the first one, uh, chorus, bridge, and then the chorus twice. Now, I normally like to play around with that, and usually the verses have the same rhyming scheme as one another, and then the bridge just kind of does its own thing, because bridges sort of exist to introduce fresh ideas and whatnot. This thing... I just stop hitting it. I'm just gonna turn this entire plant. Ooh. There we go. You can sort of do whatever you want here. Some songs have no bridge, some songs are just 
chorus, verse, chorus, verse over and over again like hallelujah. Some songs don't appear to have a chorus at all. Honestly, most of what I do here is on a whim and things like if I have a good idea for the bridge because if I'm not feeling anything, I might just drop it. Or if the chorus repeating twice at the end would end up getting annoying or repetitive. That can happen. When I was like 10 and going through my Justin Bieber phase, everyone hated hearing me sing the end of Baby because instead of like nine babies in almost uninterrupted, it was all over 18. If you didn't know me back then, be grateful. Anyway, after working out a concept, a summarizer, a bunch of feelings about your subject, and you've rhymed and structured all of the things that you want, congratulations, you now have song lyrics. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good life. Bye! This is the non-copyright song. You can use it in anything if you want, but you probably don't, even though you would have to give credit. It's the non-copyright song. That is ever song. Bravo.